So we're in a new backpacking season now and there's people making a ton of noise out there. What's up everybody, this is Tuba Solo coming at you and this channel is all about hiking, backpacking and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, consider subscribing. Now let's take a look at the XMID Pro 1 by Dan Durston Designs. So we're in a new backpacking season here in Southern California and um, just like anybody else, I went ahead and I picked up some new gear that I'm, that I'm going to be trying this year, at least I'm hoping to be able to try this year. Um, we haven't quite had some luck with uh, being able to kind of plan a backpacking trip that'll work. I'm not too terribly excited about going up to the high level snow and stuff like that and, and a lot of the lower lying areas, the roads are either all messed up or some kind of ridiculous close, uh, some ridiculous closure by the uh, Forest Service has been implemented, which I'm sure has full legitimacy, but you know, it's kind of been a little bit frustrating, but I do have a bunch of new gear that I wanted to try out in this backpacking season. And one of those uh, new pieces of gear is the XMID Pro by Dan Durston Designs. Now, this is a unicorn tent, for lack of a better term. So many people absolutely love this tent and think it's like the greatest thing in the world. So I, you know, thought probably a good idea for me to take a look and see what all the hubbub is about. Maybe it'd be a good idea if I picked one up and uh, just kind of gave it a once over, tried it on a few trips and see if it can become my long-term shelter and kind of the, the, the centerpiece of my backpacking equipment. All right, so there it is, the Dan Durston XMID Pro 1. Now, I've got this thing set up in my yard. This is about my 20th pitch now, at least, or over 20, actually, over 20 pitches with this tent. I know that a lot of people like to go ahead and just kind of do their first initial uh, pitch with the tent and just kind of get it out of the box. They're so excited. I certainly did that when I got the, uh, the box. I literally came home immediately and pitched it. Now, I didn't take any sort of pictures or anything like that, but I, I was very excited, and I want to see how easy it is. I've seen it pitched by a number of people on YouTube, and... Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you, man, the, the pitch is kind of rough, but uh, I thought that I would maybe be a little bit different and be able to pitch it correctly. And um, right off the, the, the bat, it pitched perfectly fine, but I also found out that through my series of uh, attempting to, to pitch this tent at least 20 plus times, uh, mind you, right here in my yard, um, I have found some deficiencies in the way that I pitch a tent. And so one of the, the pros of the tent, which is actually also shockingly a con of the tent is that it pitches super easy. Now, um, the, the caveat to that is that even though it pitches super easy, it, it is, I've at least noticed myself that it, it is a very exact pitch. When it says on the Dan Durston website or uh, Durston Gear website that you really need to kind of get your rectangle down pretty, pretty exact, um, they really mean it. And when you pitch the tent and your rectangle is not pretty much perfect, yes, you are gonna see deficiencies in the pitch. Now, with all of that said, even though it requires a very exact pitch, what's really nice about this tent is that it fixes really easy. So even this time when I, when I pitched it here, I went ahead and I went around and I moved the guy lines around while the tent was pitched, you know, and just kind of made some adjustments here and there to be able to get it to pitch completely correct. There was a little bit of saggy and wrinkly wall I was able to fix that without a problem. So again, it's a positive that it pitches very simple uh, with a very simple uh, floor plan. It's just four stakes and then bring the poles up. But again, it's an exacting pitch. If, you're, if you don't have that rectangle correct, you are gonna see deficiencies in your pitch. But then again, you can easily fix those deficiencies. Here, I'll show you an example of what I did. Now, let's say this corner, something was tweaked with this. Even though this was set, I was able to easily just kind of come in here pick this up, move this around, make, make the proper adjustment that I had, and then I can go ahead and shove the stake back down. I can go around to any of these sides and make the proper adjustment that's required, you know? Very simple, easy to do, and that's the beauty of this tent. Again, even though it's a very exacting pitch, you can go by and make changes quite easily so that everything will, will sit correctly. Inside the XMID Pro right now, we have a 25-inch uh, wide pad, and as you can see, it fits perfectly fine in there. Now, I, I want to make one thing clear that um, this is very much a sleep chamber type tent. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, no, you're not going to have tons of room to move side by side. Um, this is essentially a sleep chamber, so in there, you're going to have 
very few items. You're gonna have your sleeping pad, obviously, your sleeping bag. Um, there's plenty of room down by the floor, and I'll show you guys the floor here in a second. But the uh, but essentially what, what this is is a sleep chamber. Um, you're gonna leave your pack outside. You're gonna leave, like, for I'll give you an example. Like, whenever I take my camera out on an adventure, uh, I usually will leave it outside of my tent in the vestibule. Now it'll be sitting on a tripod, so it's kind of up there into the vestibule protected. But that's, that's essentially kind of a lot of the tents that I have, unless I'm taking a two-person tent. If I'm taking a one-person tent, I, I am basically looking at that uh, sleeping area as a sleep chamber where I'm going to be in it, protected from the bugs. My sleeping bag is going to be in there, my sleeping pad, maybe a few items, and everything else is going to be in the vestibules. But I can say that um, when it comes to the, the sleep chamber itself, the area in there, there is plenty of room. And even me, a big guy, I got big wide shoulders and, and I'm six foot, I'm, I'm very close to 300 pounds. I am not a small person in any way whatsoever. Even I hopped in there and I felt perfectly fine, um, even with the width from side to side. Now, one of the things that really helps is the fact that, that you have so much headroom in there, like a, there's not a claustrophobic feel. So I'm, I'm fine with being confined on the sides as long as I have headroom. Now, the, the times where I feel super claustrophobic is when I'm confined on the sides and right above my head, like there's something there. So uh, when I had my first couple tents, you know, like my first lunar solo, when I wasn't so good at pitching it kind of higher up, um, yeah, I did kind of have that claustrophobic feel because, yeah, the, the material was kind of right over my head. I had plenty of floor space, but the material was right over my head. Um, so it kind of gave me that sensation of uh, that claustrophobic sensation. Now, I can say definitely with the X Mid Pro 1, you do not get that feeling. When you look up, um, it is absolutely wide open and yeah, you, you just get a nice open feel in this tent whenever you're laying down. And when you're sitting up, of course, you have plenty of room. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I can totally see why people love this tent. I totally understand the design and I can definitely see the benefits of having this particular style tent as a living area. Even though it's a sleep chamber, there's definitely a lot of livable area in there and it does not feel claustrophobic in any way. Okay, so as promised, there's your foot box right over there. I know the camera angle isn't quite the best, but uh, we're kind of on a tall tripod here. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you have tons of space as you can see right over there. Um, you have space over there, but over here in this corner, you have tons and tons of space over there where you can just put stuff if you wanted to. You could even kick the pad all the way to the end. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll still have a ton of space, um, especially if you have a mummy pad. So if you push this over there, you can continue to have a ton of space down by your feet over there in that corner, and you'll actually still have a ton of space by your head too. And we'll go ahead and flip the camera around again and show you that too. So again, we're back to the head end. I've pushed the pad all the way down to the end. As you can see, you have tons of space in there. I mean, the design of this, this tent is uh, really well thought out and uh, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, you definitely can bring some items in there. Now, you can bring your backpack in there. I think it'll probably be a little bit tight, but um, yeah, with uh, with kind of the 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 living quarters that you have in there, I think you have more than enough room to make it a very spacious sleep chamber. Now, one of the things I'm super excited about is the magnet that holds the door up right over there. Um, if anyone's backpacked with me for even the slightest amount of time, you know that I've probably said this this terminal or I've said the statement in your presence. My my arch nemesis, the toggle. For some reason, whenever I go backpacking, I have the hardest time putting toggles and loops. But hey, I guess everybody's got a weird thing about them, and I guess that's that's my thing. But I really do like this magnet style. Um, I had some you know trouble with it. And I'll go ahead and I'll put the video in here. I thought for whatever reason that the magnet was loosening up whenever I would, whenever I'd push on the tent over here like this, that magnet would, would come out. Okay, Dan, this is what I was talking about here. So it's uh, this side of the tent. Um, like I said, it clicks in pretty nicely, you know. You heard that, I'm sure. But then what happens when I press on this side right here, it will pop out. So if I push that out, it pops out, okay? I go over here to this side. Again, there it is. Do the same thing, it doesn't, it doesn't pop out. So when I press that, that stays. But this side does not. So let me see if I can get this thing rolled up without too much trouble. Okay, 
Okay, so again, cl clicks in pretty good. Okay. And then, let me see if I can get my hand in there too. So you see what I'm doing when I go there? Give it a little push like that, it pops out. And I actually sent a, a message in the, the Durston gear group and Dan Durston actually responded and, um, uh, you know, kind of gave me some tips and what have you on what exactly I could have been doing wrong or he asked some questions on what I could have been doing wrong. But I went ahead and I pitched a tent again. I actually realized that my trekking pole that I was using at the time was not tightened well enough and it was actually slipping and causing the tent to kind of dip without me really realizing, like I would post the tent uh, up and then I would walk away and I wouldn't notice that ever so slightly was starting to fall slower and slower. And then I would come back and think like, oh, something's not quite right. And I would shake the tent and then that, that magnet right over there would pop out. And it was only this side. So I guess whatever it was, I, I kept using the same pole on the same side. Okay, so here we are again. I went ahead and I pitched the tent again. Uh, I think maybe this, uh, this is what was happening. This pole was pushing down. So I went ahead and I tightened this. So now this is completely firm. And now when I push, one here, it's not doing it anymore. I'm really giving it a go and it's, I guess the issue is me. I didn't pitch it correctly. Getting the same result, but now that I'm kind of, I figured out that issue, there's no issue and this grips really nicely. And uh, as you can hear it, the nice click to it. And seems to hold really well. And yeah, really like that feature. I'm, I'm kind of glad that things are going to be a little bit easier for me when I barely got my brains with me on top of some super high peak. Uh, things are not difficult to use. They're actually very easy to use. So let's go ahead and hop in the tent. And um, again, remember, I'm a really big guy, dude. I am not small by any means. I am six foot, almost 300 pounds. And let's see how easily I can get in and out of this tent. So just going to make one quick movement of this thing. I think I'm actually on a on a slope down here. <laughs> my... I couldn't have found a worse spot to do this in, huh? Okay, so alright. Just get and there you go. That's basically what it looks like. There's somebody in there. Plenty of room in here. Can't complain. And I tend to sleep on my side often. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of room here even for sleeping on your side. And uh, it's definitely not on my face here. And when I look up, I have a great view and an open feel in this tent. And one of the other things I wanted to make mention of is those pockets that are sitting right over there. Those things are great, man. Um, I know in my, Sky, uh, my Six Moon Design Skyscape Trekker, the pocket was kind of down at the bottom of, the, uh, of where the, um, the zipper kind of went with the door. And it was okay, but the problem was is that there wasn't really enough, um, there was enough pull over there. And whenever I'd put my cell phone in that little pocket, it would always kind of dip, dip downwards. I can definitely say that, that in this one, let me go grab my cell phone, that it definitely holds it a lot better. And I definitely like the fact that it's up above. So let me go ahead and, and put this in here. Close that up. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me check the camera. So there you go. There's my iPhone 13 plus. Um, and it's sitting up there in that pocket with no problem and it's up high. I know where it is every single time whenever I'm backpacking and I could easily grab it. I could even put my headlamp up in there and uh, that way like usually what I do is I sleep with my headlamp on so that I can easily grab it but if I know exactly where it's at every single time if I just have to reach up and you know I reach in that pocket and I grab my headlamp it makes it even easier where I don't have to wear my headlamp because there has been sometimes where I'm wearing my headlamp and it's actually fallen off as I've kind of twist and turned and didn't realize in the night. And then I wake up in the morning and, uh, or rather I wake up in the middle of the night if I have to go to the restroom or do something like that. Um, I'm searching for my headlamp because it's so dark out in the forest, I can't see it. And I've literally had times where I'm like tapping around in my tent, trying to find my headlamp or it's maybe scooched under my pad and I don't realize it. Um, just to have that pocket up there, to know where things are at, to have it be as secure as it is, um, 
yeah, it makes a huge difference. So, so kudos to that design. I really, really, really like that feature. Okay, and a couple of uh, upgrades that I've done myself to this tent. Um, I happen to like the look of ZPAC Z-Line, that, you know, super bright yellow. Um, yeah, I, I like the look of it. I also like the fact that I can see it even during the day. I did a couple times as I was setting up this tent with the black line that came with it. I went ahead and I stepped on the black line a couple times because I didn't notice, but with the Z-Line, I could walk around this tent, I see it bright yellow, um, very easy for me to see it as I'm getting older. Everything seems like it's more difficult to, to see. Um, yeah, it, it really helps me see. So I, I went ahead and I changed the original black line to Z-Pack Z-Line um, and all the zipper pulls and everything. I went ahead and I changed the Z-Line as well. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier for me to see. Um, but yeah, there was certainly nothing wrong with the with the line that came with it. This was just more an aesthetic uh, choice for me and a functional choice for me because, again, it just makes it a lot easier for me to, to, to be able to see where all those things are when I'm walking around the tent or when I'm opening zipper pulls and uh, whatnot. Kind of last thing that I wanted to talk about where I don't know if this is necessarily a con. I mean, it's certainly not a bad thing, but... I've kind of chosen, at least for the time being, that I'm not going to be using the loops that are down here, okay? Hopefully I didn't get, a, get in the way of the camera, but right here, there's some loops where you're supposed to put your trekking poles in. Right now I have the Durston, the Durston flick lock poles. Those have been great, but this allows the floor to stay a little bit more taut. I feel like there's a little bit too much pressure pulling on those areas. So for the time being, I'm choosing not to use those. Even on one of the forums, I think it was in the Durston Gearheads. I'm not sure where exactly I read it. I, I can't imagine it was somewhere else, but somebody had mentioned that that particular little tie out had pulled out and they had to kind of do a, a bush trail fix until they had a chance to do a little bit better fix on it. But I've even noticed myself that there's a lot of pressure pulling on that. And I actually kind of can see the seams because sometimes it pulls um, based on where I have the tent pole. So for now, I'm just gonna not choose not to use them. It seems like it works fine the floor. If I'm in a situation where I feel like I need to use them, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. But right now, I'm, I'm a little bit weary about that one part. The floor is very thin. And uh, it's not to say that the material isn't strong, but just from what I'm seeing, I'm, eh, I'm just gonna hold off for the time being on using those loops. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with them. I'm sure there's people who use them for hundreds of nights of use without any sort of issue, but yeah, right now I'm not quite ready to make that commitment with, uh, with, that, uh, with that little setup. Seems like the floor is holding just fine, and uh, we'll just go with it uh, without using those for the time being. And then probably lastly, what I wanted to talk about was these ties over here. Um, I've heard a few people complain about, oh, you know, it would have been nice had there been some kind of a magnet system for that. Granted, I'm sure it would have been nice, but really those are not the biggest problem in the world. They're pretty easy to use. I don't really tighten them, them down too terribly hard and they seem to work just fine. So, um, but I did want to make mention that even though this is a magnet system, this you actually have to have to kind of tie what's like a couple pieces of bungee and you just do an overhand knot. I think it's called whatever. I don't know what they're called, but just do a simple overhand knot and let it hang and it usually holds just fine without any sort of issue and it's very easy to take take uh take off once you get in the tent so that is pretty much it thank you for taking the time to watch this video hopefully you found the information useful if you would like to see more content like this more gear content go ahead and leave me a like down below and let me know until next time take care